What is going on, man? Oh, it is Friday afternoon. Dang it. We can't get any further from Monday as of right now. St. Patty's weekend. Oh, St. Patty's Day. <laughs> Goodness. On a Monday, a lot of people taking off. Uh huh. And I said, uh, yeah, they're all taking off Monday to party. Yeah. I said, well, you want to take off Tuesday. That's <laughs> you the know, like, show. I mean, yeah. You don't wake up Tuesday like, what? The I should have taken fuck? off. I do. Joe was right. Yeah, Joe was right. We, we never say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, welcome to another episode of The Commute. Yep. I will be your driver. And I will be your passenger. So, man, nothing wants to stick on here today. No. Okay, so, did you ever have a treehouse when you were a kid? Uh, yeah, yeah, Gabe and I, like, uh, when they were first building his house, there was a bunch of, like, fallen trees and stuff, like, across the road. Uh-huh. And, uh, like, before they built all the houses, we, like, carved out all that stuff in there and built, like, all kinds of cool, you know, tree houses, played G.I. Joe and shit back in those woods forever. Was it big? Like, what was it? Um, no, I mean, it wasn't, it was, like, a tree, like, falling over, like, a almost like a dugout kind of thing. I mean, it's pretty big, but it wasn't like huge. When we had one, it was a, uh, we had a kid that had this tree in his backyard, mm -hmm. lived in the street behind me. And we had, uh, we, we made a club. You know, we had like a, I don't know what the club was based on, but it was a club sure. and sure. you had a, you know, pretty much if we were friends, you were in the club, right. if you weren't, you know. <laughs> so we wanted to build a uh, tree house and the kid's tree and he says, well, I have a great idea. He said, if everyone else gets the wood, I'll have my dad build it. Mm -hmm. He's like, he's real good at that stuff. I said, okay. We were maybe eight, I was maybe eight years old at the time. So right away I go home, I'm like, dad, we gotta go to Rickles. And Rickles, do you remember them? Yeah, yeah. They were like the Home Depot uh, right. of yeah, yesteryear. What it used to be. Before. He's like, for what? I was like, we gotta get wood for a tree house. He was like, I'm not buying all the wood for everyone's tree house. <laughs> and I'm like, what if I can get someone to go in on it? You know, because I'm like, I want to get this thing built. So a buddy of mine, his uncle says, you know, he lives with his uncle. He's like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll pitch into it. So we go to Rickles, we buy all this wood, we bring it to this kid's house. So we come back the next day, and uh, his dad's working the tree house. I'm all excited. We're like, oh, I've got this badass tree house. Yeah. <laughs> A master carpenter, he was not. Yeah. Uh, no. He it was. He pretty much got a big flat piece of wood, mm -hmm. laid it so that it sat in the tree. Sure. I guess fixed a little bit, mm -hmm. and they just had like the, they weren't even walls. Like, I, don't, I don't know what this guy was doing. Like at eight, I could have built. Like I was eight, and I was like, really? <laughs> I'm know? unimpressed with your work. I, I could do a better, <laughs> you know, job than this. This is crap. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, we were able to climb it and get in there and yeah. have our little club or whatever. We just always went tree house. You know, tree houses are cool. So there's this guy in, uh, let's see, where's he from? Wenatchee, Washington. I mm -hmm. uh, don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not. Finally buys a home, he's got a family. He's got this big tree in the front yard. Sure. And he says, finally gonna have my tree house. So he builds this tree house and uh, it was a pretty nice tree house. I mean, it was it was nice. You could, you could definitely chill out there for a day. Mm -hmm. It wasn't obnoxiously huge. Like, they have that reality show where these guys go yeah, to the tree yeah, house. That's, that's kind of what I was thinking. There are houses you yeah. know, that you can live in. It wasn't like that. But he's, you know, and he, and he just builds his tree house for his kids. He's got a couple of kids. Mm -hmm. And he says, ah, oh, you know, I finally got you. He builds it. Well, the city comes in and says, you got to tear it all down. And he's like, what? They said, it kind of hangs over the sidewalk a little bit. That's a safety hazard. Right. You got to take it down. So he's arguing, says, no, nah, I don't really think it's hanging over the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and if I look at the picture, they didn't really show where the sidewalk, what it was, he's got his front yard, it's fenced in, the tree is outside mm -hmm. of the front yard. Uh, so I can see how it would hang over the sidewalk. So, uh, but he's just like, Debbie, he's like, sorry, you, you, you know, suck it, I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. So then the city comes in and says, well, look, you can keep it if you buy a million dollar insurance policy. Oh my gosh. And he says, oh, I'm, not buying a million dollar insurance policy no, either. by any means. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so uh, so now they, they have to take this thing to court. They're, they're, like the city went to the higher court, <laughs> whatever the next step would be, and they're trying to have them take it down. Hmm. But I mean, I don't know. It, 
To me, it just seems like you're, you're just pissing on somebody's dream. You yeah, know? It, that almost sounds like a, like a disgruntled neighbor or something like, like the neighbors them. are pissed off. Yeah, yeah that's because it is in the front. I mean, right. like it blocks the view of this guy's house. Even oh yeah, from the street. But um, uh, that's probably exactly what it was. Like some kind of <sighs> fucking neighbor. informal, informal like uh, homeowners association or something. Just crap. <laughs> Lowering the value of my home. Well, that's probably what they're thinking. Like, Christ, no one's going to buy this house with it because it is, like I said, it's, it's big. Right. But I don't know. I saw that and I felt bad for the guy. Because mm-hmm. I know even the crappy treehouse we had. Yeah. Like, if someone had to, like, tear it down, mm-hmm. that would have been sad. Yeah. So I guess the, the kid in me felt bad for this guy. <laughs> the only other one I remember we did was um, we were playing, uh, playing paintball all the time. Like, when I was, you know, teenager and stuff and we went out there one time and we built like we bought a bunch of wood and stuff and built like a almost like a little tree stand thing and uh we built that thing and it, we had people coming over later so we went out there real early in the morning so we set this whole thing up built like a platform and everything up there and we knew they were coming in the woods at like a certain time so as soon as they you know we heard them walking in we were up in the thing like just waiting for them <laughs> Paintballs? Yeah, it just started shooting at them. They're like, ah, they're diving, trying to throw their masks on real quick and everything. Oh, so they were prepared. They had like gear. Yeah, they had it like it like, like on. They were walking hurts. in. They're just like pellet to the eye. Yeah, we're just, <laughs> you know, we we're shooting at them from like far enough away. Yeah. We weren't gonna smack it in the eye or nothing. But That's funny. It was hilarious. It started like it started this huge thing for like the rest of the day. It was awesome. Your club against their club. Yeah, yeah, kind of thing. That's fun. That's fun. Yeah, we, uh... Do you ever have any disgruntled neighbors? Um... Talking about neighbors that can be a pain in the ass? No, not personally. No, no I don't, I don't yeah, think so. I've always like, been lucky with neighbors. Yeah, our neighbors right now, I mean, you know, they're they're both... Like, the one guy's a priest, the other guy's, you know, in the fire department. It's like his mom's house he looks after, so... I've always lived, like... It's, it's weird. I've always lived next to good neighbors, like one on each side of me. Mm-hmm. And then, like everyone else around me is just old. You know, wherever I move, that's they're just old. And they call the street I live on now Death Row because it's just like all old people and they're just they just die just off. To die. You know? Yep. But uh, yeah, yeah, I've always had good luck with this neighbors. Mm-hmm. So then, with uh, we we're talking about St. Patty's Day, I figure. Try to find something to say, Patty's Day-ish, you sure, know. Yeah. And I thought, well, who doesn't love the Shamrock Shake, hmm. right? I mean, yeah, they're good. I don't go crazy over them, but I know people yeah, do. Yeah, I don't have to go out of my way. You know, them, but I don't mind it. Yeah. So I'm looking into the whole thing of that, the history of that. Uh, they were created in 1970. Huh. I would not have thought they were that old. Like I remember yeah, them to yeah. me being a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like. 80s but they were created in uh, 1970 and they started getting popular because in 1974 uh, a member of the Philadelphia Eagles his daughter had leukemia okay so he wanted to find a way you know raise money for leukemia and sick kids Mm -hmm. so they went in with the Ronald McDonald's house and he said look promote these shakes yeah you know and we'll put you know a lot of the money and that's look at this look look, right around what a fucking genius well he has a Mercedes yeah, well, so, you know, getting your, you know, getting your right position, buddy. Mm-hmm. But uh, so he gets together with Ronald McDonald's house, and this thing kicks off, and they decide, okay, we have to sell it in more locations because you know it's mm-hmm. for a good cause. Sure. Uh, so they do that. Since then, over sixty million of oh, them. Look at go. this guy; he's going to go all the way down. Nice. No, oh, he's tar- but still. Yeah. Holy shit! The privileged. Right, normally there's cops all up and down here. But well, that's that's how you earn a black license plate. You, He's you working yourself, on it. Yeah. Right, he wants his there's black license plate. There's points you need. <laughs> oh, it's this, oh, the, yeah, this okay. is that guy. He was honking. Remember the one day we came down here and he was honking at the person that was parked like oh, in the handicap yeah. thing? That's that same guy. So he's going to park in the handicap thing? Yeah. Or was he waiting for this person to back out? Uh, who knows? No, who knows? I don't anymore. care. Yeah, I'm talking about him. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> So since then, 60, over 60 million of them have been sold, which is pretty good considering they're only out, you know, a month a year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bad thing about them is a 22 ounce shamrock shake mm-hmm. is 820 calories. That's 
not too surprising. I mean, that's... I, I was shocked it was that much. Yeah. I mean, that's half your caloric, you know, caloric intake, intake for the day. <laughs> it's as bad as eating one and a half Big Macs mm -hmm. or one and a half large fries. Yeah. Three Egg McMuffins. They're pretty bad for you. Yeah. I, I had no idea they were it's, that bad. It's a ton of ice cream, though. I mean, in a, in a shake, really. Yeah. Well... A lot of chemicals. <laughs> you know, not so much ice cream. <laughs> you know, it just comes in a big plastic bag that they right. froth up and the it turns into something. Froth. It's kind of like the center of Oreos. Yep. Squeeze some mint juice in it and <laughs> call it a day. Call it a day. <laughs> uh, it wasn't until 2012 that they were available nationwide. So that's probably why as kids, they so seem like a this new area? thing to uh, No, I mean, you could find them in other areas. But not every one of them had, not every McDonald's sold them. I guess oh, they slowly it like, spread. Right, like an exclusive kind you know, of thing. since then, yeah, if you wanted to carry it, you could. But, uh, you know, so it's, but it's, it's weird, because if it started in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. or at least became big in Philadelphia, yeah. the fact that, I mean, I remember being like eight or nine thinking, hey, these new mint shakes. Maybe Unless it I just was. don't remember. Well, maybe it was. Maybe, you know, if it was just in that Philadelphia area, you know, maybe it was just a few stores yeah, there. Yeah, maybe. And yeah, then didn't go into how many stores sold it. That's why it seemed new. It was new to those new stores, you know, those other stores. The, uh, there used to be a mascot for them. Uncle O. Grimacy, which is pretty much what? Grimace. Just green. green. Yeah. It was Green Grimace, you know, it looked okay. like he fell in a bag. I, I can't, I've never seen that before. I, I've I don't remember that. him at all either. No. I do not remember. Maybe it's something in my head. I'm trying to forget. Uncle yeah, Ogrimacy. Yeah, you got bad memories of. You know, <laughs> maybe Uncle Ogrimacy touched me before <laughs> when I was in the playhouse. Yeah. You know the yeah. play area. The green hand comes up out of the ball pit. <laughs> <laughs> trickle, trickle. <laughs> Uncle Ogrimacy. Oh God. <laughs> Don't tell your mom. <laughs> Don't tell mom. You never saw me. <laughs> Little bastard. Which, you can't touch the playing lands from when we were kids compared to today's playing lands. Yeah, I mean, not even, not even close. No. I mean, now, I mean, they're cool now. You know, they have like the tubes and you yeah. can go, up, but we had like, everything was designed after a character. Mm -hmm. You know, they had, you could go up into the, the cop's head. Yeah. Remember that one? Yeah. They got rid of like half those characters there now. Like, ah, you don't see them thing. anymore. Like that's. You don't have like that uh, the burglar guy or any of that stuff. Like all those people are gone. They pretty much really only have Ronald now. You might see Grimace now and then. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't even. You think don't I've see the seen fry that. guys anymore. Nah, nah, that's all gone. The nuggets, the little chicken nuggets. Ugh. Remember them? Yeah. And they would hop in the sauce. <laughs> Yay! And they'd be happy when they got in the sauce. Uh -huh. Like fuck yeah, <laughs> we're in the sauce. <laughs> they had uh, early bird. Early bird. She was like the breakfast bird. Oh yeah. Because the early bird got the breakfast yeah, sausage, I guess. I, you want it more than I do. Yeah, take it, dude. So, no, I don't remember. Early you don't remember bird. her? It was the girl. It was a no, girl bird. I don't remember that at all. She dude. was like, "Hey, Ronald, <laughs> come and get your egg McMuffin." <laughs> and he'd be like, "Oh, I'm gonna get my egg McMuffin, early bird." <laughs> You want to lay me some eggs? <laughs> I think that's how the commercial went. I don't. That's that's your record. I don't. Yeah, I don't fully yeah. remember. That that could be somewhat hazy. <laughs> Maybe that's what Uncle Mc, McGrimacy showed me. <laughs> you want to see a movie, kid? <laughs> <laughs> this is Ronald McDonald. But uh, there is a Shamrock Tracker you can go online to find which stores, oh, which stores have it. So, the but, Shamrock it's, shape, but it's national now. Yeah. So. so why do you need to track anything like that? Just for something. Like that. Yeah. So you're just tracking every McDonald's, basically. And here's something most people don't know that I found out. I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. Little uh, McLingo. If you go in and ask for a McLeprechaun, mm -hmm. they will make you a McLeprechaun, which is the Shamrock Shake, but chocolate. Oh. So it's oh. chocolate mint. <laughs> they don't advertise it. But if you ask for a McLeprechaun. There's like there's stuff like that in all, almost like all fast food things. Mm -hmm. Like for like the longest time, like I didn't know uh Taco Bell had like green sauce. 
Yeah. Like you can ask for that. Like yeah. I didn't I didn't even know that was a thing and I just saw that today because they started advertising they sell now their sauce in like mm -hmm. jars at the yeah. supermarket. And I saw the green sauce and I said, Yeah, dude, I didn't know about that for years and a friend of mine's like we went in there one time and he just he got the green sauce and I was like, What the hell's the green sauce? I've never seen this animal. Nope. And from then on it's every time we went in there, because it used to be cheap and you kind of like make it like a drug deal you lean over the counter like hey getting that get the green sauce the green sauce let's pass them over it's too bad she's like meet me in the parking lot too bad <laughs> what you got i got green sauce how much you got and you're acting 20. all you know like you you got the inside <laughs> yeah. ticket at, at taco bell people are like what'd you order don't worry about it <laughs> yeah, i didn't order mine. nothing just mind your own I, what I asked for was some personal space, <laughs> asshole, okay? Christ. I didn't come here for a lecture. I can see how the whole thing would go down. Can I be like, why are you being so mean? No, because then everybody's going to want the green sauce. <laughs> and then I'm going to come in, and there's not going to be any fucking green sauce for me. <laughs> what about my sauce? You better learn to start being rude to people. Uh, last minute gold club turn there. Hey, why not? <laughs> But, uh, so yeah, so I found out some interesting stuff about Yeah, that's pretty cool. Shamrock Shake. But I did see, I read an article, maybe I'll bring it on for the next show, of all kinds of things in every restaurant, that, like you just said, that you ask yeah. for, that aren't on the menu, mm -hmm. but if you ask for them, they have them, they make them for you. And it's like, That'd be good. and it's like weird shit, like, like shit they don't even, that doesn't even match what they sell. Right, so it's like ingredients they would have to have, like, separate from Yeah. Their normal orders. Yeah, you know, like like uh, going to a strictly chicken place and asking for a steak. Right. Oh yeah, we got that. <laughs> right, don't Do tell you? nobody. <laughs> Where are you going? Because we don't want to run out of steak. <laughs> so yeah, that'd be something. I'll have to look all that up. We'll, yeah, uh, yeah, get a list of those things. That'd be fun. It's a little preview for the next show. Right. Stay tuned if you want to see all that stuff. <laughs> Good. Um, a couple things. Well, speaking of Philly, like I saw the uh, their one of their streets, like the I guess North Third uh, Street, uh -huh. like between Market and Gerard. That's been like I guess a bunch of like tech companies have like moved in there, and like they've been calling it like jokingly like Nerd Street for like years now, like North Three R D Street. Okay. So Nerd uh, okay. Street I got in. It you know text language but they're actually like there's a there's a city council res resolution in there now to actually change the name of the street to that to nerd, to nerd street? street it'll be <laughs> n3rd street on the street side i wonder if that would uh help the value of the homes yeah, it's a, well it's not really homes it's just businesses so. oh okay okay and like mainly tech like software oh, so they probably love it yeah yeah so it's like they could put that on their letterhead you know. Well, that would be cool. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of a cool, you know, get thing. a letter. So that's, I guess that's going to get voted on next week. Boy, <laughs> things we pay city council for this month too. <laughs> he lives on Asshole Street. Yeah, yeah. That's justly named. <laughs> uh, but he loves his dog. He loves his Yorkie. Yeah. Aw. <laughs> God love him. He's a good guy. To get all the way over from this side, there's not a, <laughs> there's an entire like off ramp devoted to getting into that lane. Like really, yeah, you don't have to move. <laughs> no, but. you can just stay there. But no, let's get over four lanes. Brilliant. Oh, we're, well, we're on the food thing. I got, I got, this is like food day. I got Man. a bunch of food stuff. Uh, uh, <laughs> South Korea, they have this ad for Oreos, right? Okay. Now, what goes supposedly perfect with Oreos? Yeah, I guess milk, dunking milk. in that. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cookies and milk. Yeah, your sure. Oreos, your milk, you like to dunk them? Makes sense. They have this ad. Look it up if you can. I lost my shit when I saw it. It's a little baby, right? A little tiny little baby. You know, a couple months old. And he's got a little Oreo in his left hand. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's all happy he's got his Oreo. And a tit in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the best. And it's just like cookies and milk, you know? And it's not even like, like, 
he's really like it's like in his mouth like he's just ready to like get in his mouth uh -huh. so there's tit yeah right there like there's tit in the oreo <laughs> ad <laughs> i'm like wow you know now, now i don't know like i have so many emotions going through my head yeah. because i got some tasty oreos now i'm getting hungry i got tit so now I'm like, oh yeah, I'm getting horny and hungry, and I got I got to make sure I get them in the right order because you know, after one you, comes the other. Yeah, but you, you, then you got to choke down the concept of breast milk. Like overall, you're not getting cow's milk out of it's, that. It's, it's you're gonna have yeah. to get breast milk. Well, I don't so much no, so much I want it for the milk yeah. as just and I got tit in my yeah front yeah of me like and, it's fine for you for that. You know, I guess yeah. it's, it's it hits on many levels. You but know? but now I got a baby watching right. me. Dude, you know, like. You know, do I like smack the baby because he's got my cookie, or do I smack him because he's got the tit? He's got your tit, yeah. That's yeah. you know, do, do I, got two do I to take smack him, him somewhere, or do I gotta like be in the? Ad? I just want me to be in the ad next to him, like <laughs> you know, <laughs> get ready to slap. You don't know which one you're gonna slap. Yeah, yeah right in the between the two. It's just like, is he going for the hand? Which hand is he gonna smack away? Hey, you know what? We don't even have to find that. We'll if we find that video, we'll link it under this. <laughs> Well, it was like a picture ad. It was just like a... Yeah. But yeah, we'll have to... I'll yeah, have to if we can find it, we'll put the link on there. Picture on the website. <laughs> oh, man. It's so it was... prudish in America. Like, why can't we have an ad like that? Because it be was funny. funny. Like, I understand, like, they would be like, oh, there's a boob in the ad, but... So you have it funny. You have it in a magazine that's for, you know, not for kids. But you know, even then, like... It, because it's, I mean, I'm sitting there, you know, making a joke like, oh, there's, but it's, it's not sexual in any way. No, it's not. You know not, what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it's, it's a kid. It's his cookie happy, and that's his milk. It, that's where he gets his milk. Right. You can't, you know, I mean, you could give him milk, but, you know, baby, if that's where they eat, like, it's like fantastic. It's, it's, it's a, it's a that's kid. Funny. At, that kid is never going to be happier in his life. <laughs> like, that's the high point of his life right there. Pure, fresh milk made milk. Minutes ago, from Mother Nature, and a fucking Oreo cookie to just I don't want to dunk it in him, but yeah, just he can't eat yeah, it yeah. down. And he's not even gonna eat it. He's gonna the little baby's gonna savor it. Just, you don't even have teeth yet. Yeah. So he's gonna stick it in his slobbery little mouth and really just melt the cookie. <laughs> just melt it. And just every time he swallows his spit back, he's gonna taste Oreo. You know, and he's gonna have cream all over his lips. Yeah. He gets a little clogged. Just take a little suckle of milk. It just. But no, but but it would work. If you talk about you want to sell stuff, yeah. I guarantee you put that ad on a billboard right here on the road, everybody goes home and buys Oreos. Maybe people can't handle it. They can't handle it. But they can't handle it. It's years of I've had Oreos on my mind all day. Yeah. And honestly, it worked you know, on you. It, yeah, it worked on me. And I, and I think the only way to to get it out of my process is to get an Oreo. Mm -hmm. And a tit. And a tit. Maybe I'll eat them over top of a tit <laughs> so the crumbs fall down. And then... So, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's... But I would love that. I just... But not just that ad. Ads like that. Yeah, just anything like, like super that. super funny. Just, I mean... Let's let's upgrade our society here. Fuck, it's, you talk you know. about... Because let's... let's You know, the Super Bowl ads lately mm -hmm. have just been shit. Yeah. They've been horrible... And that's really what most people want to see. No one gives a crap about the game. Right. It's you wait for the commercials. And the last couple of years have been horrible. Can you imagine if they could do ads like that? That would have just blown people away. Mm -hmm. Like close up on the Oreo. Yeah. A new way to enjoy your Oreo. And then just bam, you back away and the kids. Cool. You know what? I, and the, like the next logical step was to, it would be to have like. The, like the watershed hour like after that certain thing a different types of ads can come on I mean that's that's what they have like on BBC and stuff mm -hmm. after like nine o'clock eight o'clock whatever it is you know it, it's accepted that kids are, are in bed and if they're right. not they're it's on you it's it's parental guidance time right you know if you got them up this late it's you know that's when, like, you can hear cursing on certain channels. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Risky I mean, it, there's, there's pretty much everything after that hour. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I was always paranoid I mean, because my kid's door opens, her bedroom door opens, and she can look right down the hallway, right through the living the room, TV. right at my TV. So, <laughs> you know, certain shows come on, and yeah. I just barricade her in, <laughs> super glue her lock. Yeah, turn the lock the other way. <laughs> And uh, the other food thing uh -huh. is the uh, bacon alarm clock. 
you seen that? No. <laughs> you hook your phone up to this machine, right? Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you rest it in it, and you set your alarm, and when the alarm goes off, it's not like an a audio alarm. Mm -hmm. It puts out the fresh smell of bacon cooking. Like, you know when you, that smell goes through your oh. house? And, uh, and that's supposed to wake you up. Yeah, but that's, I'd be annoyed by that because you don't actually now you don't get have any bacon. bacon. Right. And then you want bacon, you don't have enough time to get it. I got time to make bacon in no. the morning, kid. Especially not at the time my alarm clock Jesus is off. God, it's no. way too late by then. That reminds me of this cool ass thing though on that uh, on that Gadget Man show. Um, it's a BBC show where like they that was the kind of thing I was talking about before. But the um, one of the gadgets was it was egg on a stick, and it was just this machine. You crack an egg, put it in there, or two eggs, whatever the hell it was, and you put like the stick that comes with the thing in there, and Skewer. you hit the button, and it's like a toaster. And when it's done, you got ah. egg on a stick. You know, I like that. To you can go. Take it with you, right? Egg to go, right? Let go of my egg to go. You don't have to like stand there and watch it. You can just hit it, jump in the shower. That's a good thing. Yeah, you're not gonna burn your egg. Yeah, you got egg on a stick, ready to go. That's the best part. So that's what I was thinking. It was gonna be something like that, where it's like <laughs> no, it's something not where like you it actually, actually got bacon. bacon. Out of it. Now that yeah. would be great. Yeah, would you be. roll out of bed and sizzly bacon. Right. Pour it down your gullet. There's a bacon alarm clock. I mean. But I'm thinking, the other thing I'm thinking is that it wouldn't wake me up. Nah, it smells, it smells don't wake me up. If it was burning bacon, that would wake me up. I'd be like, what the yeah, hell's on fire? it might wake me up. I mean, I, I'm going to be that guy that dies in the house fire because okay. I'm sleeping. <laughs> you know, like, it's not going to wake me up. Yeah. You know, if I'm asleep, I'm asleep. The best way to wake me up is to kick me in the balls. You know? Dude, the slightest, like, like, my alarm clock is so quiet. Like, it's it barely makes any sound. It's like... Oh wow, no. And it wakes me up out of a dead sleep. I have two alarm clocks because I'm so That's yeah, that's how that's how my wife is. Same thing. It's deep like deep sleep. You know. She hits the snooze button like a million times. That thing's so loud. <laughs> Saturday is the worst. Just the worst. It wakes me up right away. But you know, and I run over and I almost twist my kneecap off <laughs> trying to hit the alarm yeah. clock. Because if I have it next to me, I'll snooze it mm -hmm. and not even know I did it or yeah. turn it off. I've turned them off before. <laughs> so I put it on the other side of the room so I actually have to get out I walk. Gotcha. You need you that know. you need that one with like wheels on it that uh yeah, like runs it, away from yeah, you, you it gotta gets, catch it. Yeah, when it goes oh, on that, it like jumps off the thing and starts going around, you gotta like, That <laughs> thing would only wake me up one time. And because then be when I caught it, ash. I would throw it the oh god. <laughs> yeah. That that wouldn't be good. Worst gift ever. <laughs> And there's, there's another one where you have to throw it to turn it off. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, it's like a those. football or something. Yeah. yeah. And you just have to, you know, it's like a little nerf thing. Yeah. You chuck it against the wall. <laughs> oh, but yeah, alarm clocks, uh, <laughs> not good. But oddly enough, when I was in college, I had a stereo that you could put any CD in that you wanted to, and you could wake up to that oh, CD, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. So I had the Good Morning Vietnam CD. Oh yeah. So and it start with, it starts start out with him, you know, Good Morning Vietnam, all that. And I would crank that shit, you know, before I went to bed. And it was so loud and obnoxious. It got to the point where, like, it would turn on, and it's the ch -ch -ch, and the CD would start to spin, or, and that would wake me up, just the ch -ch -ch, and I'd be like, oh, and I'd run and get that shit off. Like it was like that. Like my body was like, dude, wake up. You know, he's about to do the he's thing. Coming. He's, he's coming. He's going to do the thing. Wake up, and there's nothing good about this morning, I promise you. <laughs> Robin Williams is coming for you. <laughs> the sun isn't up yet. It's not a good morning. He didn't sleep long enough. <laughs> Shut him up. <laughs> but yeah, it was a... Uh, that was bad. Yeah. But good. Like I said, because then it got to the point where I didn't bother anybody with an alarm clock because literally nothing was waking me up. Like, sure. Yeah. It was just a little thick and maybe the whir. I would get to the whir. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> no, you don't. Sorry, Charlie. Uh, got one uh, kind of on the same thing as food. I was, was looking on uh, Hulu the other day, like flipping through, trying to find a new show, because kind of caught up on stuff I was watching. Oh, you're lucky. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't, I don't do the DVR thing, so <laughs> if I miss it, I, it's gone. You missed it. Too bad. I mean, it, or it's on Hulu, and I'll, I'll just catch it later. Power watch it. But uh, no, I found, I found one on there. It's like a newer show that just came out, uh, Farmed and Dangerous. And, Farmed. And yeah, dangerous? and it's, it's like, um, it's got 
this guy, he played, um, he played like the devil on, um, this, this other show with, uh, like the kid, like died and went to hell and like the, the devil like brought him back and was like, was making him do stuff. I don't remember what the heck it was called. It was the one where he had to like catch uh, criminals. Yeah, escape, yeah, 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 yeah. Show, yeah. Yeah, the like, out of hell or whatever. Yeah. Didn't like Kevin Smith had something to do with that. Oh really? I think yeah. Oh. But uh, it, it was the guy who was the devil in that. And in this, he's he's a lawyer, and he's like, it's like satirical, like he's representing like <coughs> these uh like like big pharma companies that are making all these like mutant animals and stuff to like you know sell more crap like like an eight wing chicken to sell more chicken wings and you know like a like the first episode was they were feeding cows with like these uh petroleum pellets so like rather than like using oil on the whole like production thing to bring them grain and all this other stuff they were just feeding them the petroleum in like pill form but the cows were like exploding from like the combustibility like that that's like seeing the trailer and stuff like that to me was funny and then I like I sat down and watched the show and like it was weird like there were certain points in the show where like a character would come on and you know it would be like it would be like an like a character of the show but then they would read this thing like not read it but their lines were so like dictating like out of like a, some sort of weird script and it was like all about these like what the satire is about basically like you know big pharma does this and this and it's not like this because you know uh, like trying to yeah, it educate was, you yeah it was almost like the... an ad like in the show and <laughs> i was like weird. what the hell is this why is it doing that you know there's plenty of other like plenty of other documentaries you know yeah you know if you want to make a documentary make a documentary right. against the pharmaceuticals yeah like, like if you want to make an entertaining show about just animals yeah I mean like Netflix is just full of them there's like the you know forks over knives and there's a ton of them like oh yeah un- uncalculable number but um, and this show like and then I was like okay that was kind of weird maybe that was just a thing for that thing and I watched the second episode and it was like the same thing again like the same kind of thing came up it was like oh. you know oh 30,000 whatever Helen's agree that <laughs> whatever it was it was like <laughs> the the lesson for that episode was in there again oh, I was like God. I can't it's unwatchable nah, yeah. I, I can't watch it as, now you're losing people right for as it lo- it's gonna lose me like I'm not gonna watch it again it, it seems like and it seems like to lose everybody because it seems like whatever group right. you're targeting, they're going to want one or the other. Exactly. Like the people that want to hear the stuff about the pharmaceutical companies being bad yeah, well, aren't going to want to watch the things with the animals, right. you know, <laughs> and vice versa. Yeah, the, you know, the people who are, like, against, like, meat or whatever, you know, like, militant vegetarians or vegans or whatever, like, they're, you know, they're going to be like, oh, hey, uh, you know, a show that makes fun of that whole thing, and it's just, and then you get this like diatribe in the middle of the, the episode of like something that's supposed to be oh no funny like I, I don't Epic just didn't fail. make sense to me at all like I don't I mean I see what they're trying to do but like you already had it you, you had the episode and then why are you I don't I don't need like the Duke boys lesson of the day <laughs> you know that's the, then that that's another thing that shocked me the most. Like going back and watching an episode of Dukes of Hazard now, it's like every episode had like a moral to it. Mm-hmm. I had no idea when I was. No, a kid. I, I was like, that. hey, that's the best thing ever. You watch, you go back and watch any episode of Dukes of Hazard now, and every every episode had some kind of like, you know, moral like lesson you were supposed to learn from that episode. Well, another show I, fa- I just recently watched again from when we were kids that same deal had this big moral thing not just had a moral but the show was actually like hardcore about that moral yeah each episode yeah fat albert do you remember that at all i I did i like i've seen i know fat albert right i I used to love it and i watch it and a couple months ago a fat albert marathon came on oh do they go back at the end of the episode and explain what it was no no they go like through the whole thing like they'll show you a little clip Okay. And then Bill Cosby comes on and says, uh, you know, oh, uh, 
looks like the kids are having trouble with blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay. You know, and then yeah. they would go and try to fix the problem. Oh. And then in the end, he would talk about, like, what the kids learned today was blah, 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 blah. Man, I love that show. <coughs> so did I. Watch it again. Watch it. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't even picture that. Get now. your daughter and sit her down and say, hey, you want to watch Fat Albert? Yeah. And I guarantee you're going to be like, this is one of the worst shows ever. <laughs> How did it I was fall fat, for I'm, this? I'm stoked. It was a Fat Albert marathon. Mm -hmm. Like all day and night, Fat Albert. And I was like, I'm ready. I'm going to sit down and <laughs> watch it. I am ready to go. I'm a Fat albert a fan today. I wonder what other things are like that. Like, um... Well, He-Man was that way. Yeah. But, yeah. And I remember that, but they would just do a show, and then at the end they would try to make some kind of uh, right, right connection, you know, whatever yeah. the plot was. That's what I was thinking. Fat Albert did, but or like GI Joe, like that yeah. didn't have anything for years, and then they added those oh, then they those started. things at the end. There's yeah. like like the you real know, people would tell like Sergeant Slaughter yeah. talking to you. <laughs> Well, it's, it, yeah, some were the, like the real Sergeant Slaughter, but other ones it was like there'd be like a house fire or something, and like you know, like the firefighter GI Joe guy would run in and like save oh, the kids. Oh, I don't remember and, that. You don't remember that stuff? No. And it was like uh, knowing is half the battle. That stuff, like those trailer things. You don't remember uh -huh. those? No, I remember knowing is okay. half the battle, but I don't remember them doing like side stories of like kids' house. Yeah, dude, it had, down. it had nothing to do with the regular show. <laughs> <battle. laughs> There's there's a friggin' hilarious thing like I've I've seen it on YouTube before where like somebody went back and like dubbed over like all those things and made it, it's just the funniest damn thing like it, just fucking just weird ass shit like that one with that with the house fire like you know uh, whatever it was like the guy comes running in and rather than the same script that was followed the guy's like holy what are you kids doing in here? Ah, pork chop sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's just all this weird shit. Uh, and like, you know, it, it, it has them being like oh, child man. molesters and just, <laughs> just like the, the craziest, like off the wall crap. It's like, I, I don't know what the search was, but look for like those, you know, the G.I. Joe messages or whatever. Well, there's was. one with He-Man. That's a riot. It's like a whole, whole song, thing. right? It's like, like him like singing and stuff. What, that one, you, know, you no. never saw that one. No, I never saw that one. Okay, that one's pretty good too. What's that one? He Man it, singing? Yeah, it's like He Man singing some. some it's like Broadway He Man. <laughs> no, it's some crazy like dance song or whatever that was popular like seven, eight years ago or whatever. Like a, oh, so it's like a spoof. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's like it's like the it's opening real? of the show, and it's like he's like uh. <laughs> like singing. <laughs> no, this was like real from the show, like his lesson at the end. Okay. And he's telling you, and I mean, the whole thing was about like. If you feel uncomfortable around an adult, or if an adult tries to, oh, okay. you know, do something to you, or a stranger, uh -huh. he's like, you know, pretty much like if, if someone is trying to touch you or, or, or lure you into the car, mm -hmm. get someone you trust, like a parent, a neighbor, or even a priest. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> if, if they would never have put that on today. That's an old message. You know, like yeah, that's an old message. <laughs> Because that would be like, if the priest is touching you, <laughs> get your parent or your neighbor. <laughs> you know, let them know. Like, oh, if, if any of these categories are touching you, <laughs> get any of these other yeah, categories. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. They're going to repeat the same list. List A, now. list B, don't mesh one or the other. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. Uh, it's, yeah, I, and then it's that same thing where like they they dubbed over like the uh, the peanuts. Oh, that's a riot! Yeah, oh that. my so, god! I go back to those oh all the time, god. Yeah, man. Those are just yeah, <laughs> and they never <laughs> get not funny. Hilarious. You can watch it over and over and over. Yeah. Yeah, and no matter what, like even if you find like one part like so like oh my god, I can't believe they said that. Like the next part, you're dying laughing. <laughs> I uh, yeah. I read this thing. There's this uh, there's a phone booth out in Las Vegas. Okay? okay, it's in the middle of nowhere. Right. Okay, middle of nowhere. It's a day's drive, pretty much, from any road. Like like you have to pack. Like like we. Well, it's a day to get there. It's not a drive because it is eight miles from any paved roads. Ain't this a geographical so, oddity? Yeah. <laughs> Four weeks from everywhere. Four weeks from everywhere. 
So you have to like get out of your car and like hike on down to this phone booth. Okay. And I, I guess they put it there thinking that they would expand at some point, mm -hmm. you know, and they would need a phone booth in town. They were laying wires or whatever, who knows? Sure, yeah. But uh, and it's like a, like a thing people do. They hike out to this phone booth to find this phone booth in the middle of the desert. Uh, it was built in 1948. <laughs> and what it was for is uh, there was uh, gold miners in the area. Okay, and so if there was emergency, so like there was something they would do, and they figure, yeah. you know, and we'll, we'll hardwire it, you know, have something good because, sure, yeah, you know, well, that's the only way they did, but they buried it in the ground, everything, it was, it was legit, and it looks like a phone booth. Well, nothing ever grew, you know, the mining left, and the towns never were built, but they still left this thing there. Uh huh. So, Pac Bell eventually goes ahead and buys up the phone number and says, you know, we're getting rid of the phone number, the phone number's no good, but until then, so a few years ago, you could call this phone booth. Right. It would ring and ring and ring. And this guy set out to constantly call this phone number, not like repeatedly all day long, right. but keep calling it until someone picked up because these people would go out to hike. Yeah. And he thought it would be neat. And he thought it would take him forever. Well, it didn't. There were so many people hiking out there that like frequently people would pick up the phone. <laughs> and he awesome. would have conversations with these people You're in the middle on of the desert. other end. And this is when like the internet was starting to get big and blogging, you know, was becoming. So yeah. he would keep record of every phone conversation and post it out there. That's awesome. So he did that until Pac Bell bought the phone number up. Right. And couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. So this other guy says, because it's a little piece of history, I want to buy the phone number from Pac Bell. Mm -hmm. So they sell it to him, and I don't know for how much. Uh, and then Pac Bell gets rid of the, the telephone booth. It's, it's not there anymore because right. now it won't ring. Yeah. But this guy gets the number and he sets it up as like a party line conference call. Mm -hmm. So like you can call and whoever is on there, you can talk to. Oh yeah, same, right? like yeah, a, same like deal a like he was doing. So I got the number, if anyone wants to call it, it's 760-733-9969. You should call it. I'm thinking. I wanted to run it by you. Just you want to call, call it on the air? Give we'll, a call, uh, man. See what, we'll see, see what see happens. What picks up. See if we can get their permission to uh, yeah. be on a podcast. And in the meantime, I, uh, I downloaded these games today off of uh, Steam. Um, there's a couple that came out recently, and I was looking at it. There's one called Nom Nom Galaxy. Nom Nom Galaxy. It's, uh, it's uh, like Terraria or any of those other things, but you, uh, you're making soup, and you're shipping it off to like feed the galaxy with <laughs> soup that you collect off this. So you make soup. Yeah, you, you collect like weeds and stuff off this planet and <laughs> make soup. That's cool. It's a soup-making game. Yeah, it's awesome. It's kind of like, like a uh, hot can, dog stand. Yeah, you can both play together like co-op and like oh. mine through stuff. And, Oh, yeah, I gotta get on that. Yeah, it's awesome. That's a good game. Next to Goat. Yeah, Goat Simulator. And the change is a contract. You are the only party in this contract. Oh, we're the only party in the conference. Oh, well. Son of a gun. Well, maybe we do this every day. We should try to call. Yeah, see, until we get somebody. Until we get somebody. <laughs> and we'll just see what's <laughs> happening. But, uh,. Yeah. And I thought that was pretty neat. That was a good experiment. Especially if they let us put them in the show. Yeah. We get the permission. Chat it up. Bring Maybe bring up one of the topics with them. Right. So we'll have an anonymous random guest <laughs> on the podcast. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it was pretty cool. I was really hoping to get somebody. Yeah. Well, now we have a mission. Yep. There's something. <laughs> we'll ask them if they want to play a soup making game with us. Right. Nom -nom. You guys like making soup? <laughs> Can we do the nom noms? It's nom nom, you know, nom nom nom. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one looked awesome. It just like they did kind of a Kickstarter thing for that. It's like nine bucks. And the other one. Uh, Ooh, nine bucks. Yeah. I don't know how I feel with nine bucks to make soup. Ah, it's great. Yeah. It'll be great. Did you play it? No, I'm playing it. Are you going to? Yeah, of course. Now you let me know. You show me the I game will. first. I will. And if it's worth it, I'll pay the nine bucks. Yeah, it's but. it's like still in beta or whatever, so uh, like it's gonna have constant updates. Yeah. But. That's, uh, those are the kind of know, games I, I get. I mean, that's that's yeah. all I get now. It's like games that are like usually under five bucks, but Nom Nom, that that could be an exception. Nom Nom Galaxy grabbed it. Right. Point. And um, the other one was uh, Infested uh, Infested Planet. 
Festus. And you control like five like space marines like on this like top down view thing. And it's like a map filled like all these endless hordes of these aliens start like pouring out of these things like uh, starship troopers. Okay. And you kind of build up this base and as you kill things you get like upgrades and that looked pretty cool. That sounds good. That one's a little expensive now, but it's because it just came out on Steam. It's like twenty bucks or something. Yeah. So, but that and sounds that could, more reasonable. Twenty dollars for that sounds more reasonable than nine dollars for a super. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Dude, I don't know. You got to see the uh, nom noms first. It's not. It's no joke. I are, mean, are like are they are they cute? What the nom? The nom nom? No, it's you're they just control one guy. I don't know. Oh. I don't know how cute. That's, yeah, there's a little cute guy it. making soup. A little cute yeah, little make, thing. Big, like Campbell's cans of soup. And you yeah, like, rocket like the Campbell's launches. kids. That's, yeah, it's like kind of what it looks like when you okay. put it in a rocket. Okay. It launches a giant can of soup into space. <laughs> so you're trying a giant to, can open. You're competing against like this other corporation for like control of the soup market, and like whoever whoever gets to like 100 percent first. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's how you win the, the scenario. So you're playing this AI. Okay, computer. so that's what I was gonna ask, is it a yeah. real person you're playing? And like or? like alien invasions keep coming in, like they'll attack your soup planet. So you gotta defend your <laughs> soup outpost with like shotguns and Ah, okay. Well now that's starting to sound a little stuff. better. It's not just making soup. No, no, it's you're not just sitting there making soup. It's no, stirring it's, the carrots, yeah. okay. Yeah, you gotta like carve out the planet. You've got like a uh, digging tool. You like carve out the planet and build ah. sections of your soup base. All right, all right. So I'm on you board build now. like robots, and the robots will like you can sort of like automate the process. Like you bring the stuff back and you throw it in your base, and the robots will like pick it up and put it in the soup machine. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm on board now. Yeah, well, that's, I, that's it, nine dollar yeah. worthy. Right. Yeah, it's no. I'm, it's got to be. Showing to me is making soup. And- you know, that's, that should alone. Hey, we can make soup together. Right, you know, a, a, a co-op game called Nom Nom Galaxy where you can make soup. I mean, that I sells mean, itself. Yeah. I just, that wasn't sure if it sold itself for nine. But, but to, yeah, just don't watch, like, there's a, there's like a trailer or something for it, like on Steam. The trailer's awful. It's just So what else did have to go by? Like, well, there's stills, and then I went to, I went on YouTube and, like, looked up, like, playthroughs and stuff. Uh, okay. So okay. people have been playing it, and, like, yeah, I watched one of those, and gotcha. that was pretty cool. But like the, the trailer thing is just awful. Like it's, it's like the developers, and it goes back and forth between like it shows like clips and stuff of the game, but then it, it's like this guy being all weird, like, like making soup for like, like a real these, guy? yeah, a real guy, and like making soup for like these, these other like developers, like these Japanese guys sitting there, and they're waiting for the soup, and he brings it in and. Well, see, that sounds like I want to watch it, just for its oddity, not, it's, to, not to give me an idea. Of the well, game. it's a complete oddity, so but. if you want something like bizarro, like I don't even understand why they made this, then watch that. <laughs> yeah, just find the nom noms on Steam. But it, it, yeah, on, on Steam, that was kind of weird too. Like on Steam, it's it's 20 bucks, but if you, like at the developer site, it was still nine bucks. Oh. Like they had like this Kickstarter thing going on, so like if you got within the first like thousand copies of it it was nine bucks and then like the next tier up is like 19 and then you know depending on how much you give to it there's it unlocks different things but that's pretty cool i i, I like the concept of like kickstarter stuff i think that's no i, I love the idea it's, of kickstarter. you know it's just it bringing somebody's idea and like the yep. the fact that you can like kind of help them you were part of it. Push, yeah, push this thing out there. You know, get it. Own whatever they're right. selling. You know, you'll get a little piece of that. You'll get whatever it is. You know, out of it. No, I love it's the idea. Just, I, it's I really it's, cool. I, I I love that there's sites like that now and bringing all these crazy like things out. It's weird how things catch on to those sites because it, it just it you can have a whole bunch of something. And one will sell, you know, one will reach its goal and all the right. others don't. Mm-hmm. And I can't figure out why like one what, does what and qualities. one doesn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There, was, there was actually like a study on that and it's <laughs> certain Kickstarters, like if they use certain words in their Kickstarter description, it'll either bring up the likelihood of your Kickstarter succeeding or bring down the odds of your Kickstarter succeeding. So like, if you use words like, I hope to, or um, uh, I, f- I forget, I would like to, there was a, there were a bunch of phrases. Right. And if you use those in, in your description, 
your Kickstarter would fail almost inevitably, almost every single time. Wow. It was like a, it was like an eighty-five percent like you're not chance. Sure of yourself, right? It was like you, you don't have enough faith in right. your own thing, and it's somehow like psychologically that's working its way into what people, you know, go for, and give money to, and stuff. But yeah, that, that was pretty cool. You should try it one time. I don't have anything to kickstart. No, no, no. Kickstart, but... Just come up with something fake. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that happens. Start some fake stuff. That shit happens, too, man. There was there was one that me and a, a buddy of mine from work, we got caught in. It was this game. It was a board game or a card game called uh, Odin's Ravens. Uh-huh. And it seemed pretty cool. You know, we watched, like, the thing, and it was based on, like, they were, like, re-implementing a game that had already come out like years and years ago so it was it was pretty much a sure thing that was going to get developed and everything it was cheap you know it was like it was under 10 bucks you know so like we you know kickstarted it and went through the whole process and came out the other end and like it turned out the guy just like took the money and that's it and like there's a whole like class action lawsuit against him now and all this other crazy. I didn't really mean take the money, like give them the money back at the end just to see if our thing was hit or not. <laughs> no. <there's, laughs> these, wow. Yeah, these this guy like took the money and ran basically. Wow. Nothing for anybody. But Well and there's other sites where like I forget which one it is. It's one of those sites like that where you don't have to have a product in the end. Like like it's kinda of, it's like uh I guess if you're, what's it called? It's like to help people accomplish something. It's more of like something. a loan and stuff. It's, thing, it's right? lending, like like just give me money to start a business. Yeah. But if you get your money, you don't have to start the business. They right. never follow up with you or anything. Because somebody was attached to that, like um, like Clinton or something was like advocating really? that, like because whatever it was called, I can't think Bill of the name Clinton. of the thing. Yeah. Like he was like a big like did some talks or something on that thing. That was it's a while ago. I now what that one's called, but but it still exists. I mean, it's yeah, still, yeah. It was it was it's for like know. like start start up like business loans for. And I know like uh, a couple of the Olympians mm-hmm. this year yeah, got like, to Russia that way, get there and pay their own way, right? And they didn't have the funds. It was like, please help me get to the Olympics. But I mean, essentially, I could have put that on there and said, please help me get to the Olympics, <laughs> and then just never go to Russia. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I didn't make a team. team. Yeah, make the team. sorry. <laughs> Yeah. If I tried out, I would have made it, maybe. But. I'm sure there's something to... <laughs> there's got to be some kind of stop block from people there's, there's doing that. Nothing. There's got to be. I mean... got to be. Well, let's try it. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's get on there and say, uh, hey, we're passing a church. We're trying... Of all things, we're trying to start a church. <laughs> and we need, uh, you know, $50,000 startup money. Mm-hmm. Please bring the Lord's dream <laughs> to Smyrna. <laughs> And uh, we'll get 50 G's and we'll hit Vegas for a week. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be some catch to that. It's just, it, it can't be. It just can't They don't be. follow up. I mean, how long is it going to take to build a church? You know, like, oh, yeah, we're still working on that church. <laughs> we haven't built it yet. <laughs> it's a church in my mind. <laughs> Turns out the 50 grand wasn't quite enough. So I'm saving my pennies. And when I get enough, I'll build my church. Yeah, no problem. Follow back up in, say, 10 years. <laughs> well, well, speaking of shady dealings, there was uh, that one, like, this uh, New Jersey, like, daycare. This daycare worker, I guess, was, like, putting on the jackets of, like, this kid to, like, go outside. Like, they were all going out to play. And uh, while she was putting on the jacket of the kid, she found uh, 28 bags of heroin in the kid's jacket. Oh, <laughs> No. Yeah. Little like a little kid. Oh. Uh, little tiny like, like two. Yeah, like going outside to play at a at a daycare and twenty eight bags of heroin in the thing. So So what is she doing? Sending the kid home and the parent was buying the drugs or No, no, like they, they arrested the whoever the dad was for child endangerment and everything else because obviously somebody oh, used so the it. the kid came to school right. with 28 bags of heroin. Yeah. Well. Oh, so it was, it was, the kid's jacket was the stash oh. for these degenerates. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <Of> <laughs> They're things. like, it ain't mine. 
Yeah, I told you, kid, don't do drugs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know where he got that This officer. kid it's never crazy. listens. Thank you, officer, for bringing this to my attention. <laughs> we'll handle it from here. <laughs> nice slap on the wrist is what he'll get. Yes, he will. No DS. No DS. For you. <laughs> you don't want to sell heroin? You're not playing the DS for a week. <laughs> Yeah. Punishment. <laughs> uh, that is the end of punishment for kids. I uh, came across some list of cool facts, cool yeah. little snippets. Uh, a dentist invented cotton candy. Right? Okay. It seems like <laughs> counterintuitive. Yeah, but, the only uh, thing yeah. they shouldn't make is cotton candy, <laughs> unless. You're hoping to boost business, you know? Sure, yeah. Like, yeah. hey, your kid eat this. See you in six months. Come see me. We're going to need to drill in yeah, six months. Yeah, you put your ad on that little paper cone on the yeah. inside. <laughs> so when he's done, oh. <laughs> oh, I want a dentist. Get your prize. Oh, I want a dentist visit. Or you put some of that gel in there that like <laughs> highlights the plaque. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Come see me if your teeth look like this. <laughs> they do. How do you know? <laughs> oh, God. By the time, it was called fairy floss. Fairy floss. So it's like, yeah, put it in between your teeth. Huh? You know, I guess the fairies because it melts, but yeah. I don't know. Makes sense. It's kind of a good name. Like, they should kind of keep the two going. Like, some. Yeah. Uh, one of these fairies. <laughs> or like, something. that should be the should... brand or something. Like, Fairy Floss Cotton Candy. Right, yeah. The kids would go nuts for that. It was little girls. Oh, yeah. Because you're going to yeah. eat that up, man. Uh, another one was the man who played McGruff the Crime Dog. For the okay. longest time, like yeah. he would go, he was like the national crime dog. Sure. And he would go to the schools and tell them, you know, be good and mm-hmm. don't do crimes and all that other stuff. He's played it for quite some time. Well, he is currently doing 16 years in jail for having a thousand pot plants and weapons, such as grenade launchers, <laughs> in his closet. <laughs> and the best part about that is he was originally busted by a drug dog. <laughs> so McGruff <laughs> got a taste of his own medicine. Yeah. Those dogs took a bite out of crime. McGruff says, <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. McGruff. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, um, what's the other one? The modern fire hydrant patent. Okay. Uh, they, they don't know when the modern fire hydrant was created because the patent for it burnt up in a fire. <laughs> there was a, a fire in 1836 in the DC patent office uh-huh. and just everything went down. And one of the things in there was the patent for the fire hydrant. <laughs> so all they know is it was between 1801 and 1836 <laughs> that it was created. But uh, if only they had one of those things out front of the yeah, exactly. patent office. Because then they thought it was a good idea. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is my favorite. Uh, the founder of Match.com, mm-hmm. you know, the dating website, he, uh, when he came up with the site, he originally, you know, you go to friends and family when you want a website to get going. Uh-huh. And he wanted everybody that he knew just to sign up for this website and create a profile. Just sure. to have people on there. Like, you guys don't really have to date anybody, but right. <laughs> just, just to get people numbers. to see what yeah. profiles look like and, you know, whatever. Uh, including his girlfriend. He was like, look, you know, like, so she goes on there, finds a guy, dumps him. <laughs> so that's a good website. Yeah, you know, like it really worked to the point where he lost his girlfriend. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but he proved it worked that well, you know, like <laughs> you can find somebody. Okay, uh, here's a message for you, though. Uh, in case of ra- <coughs> oh, excuse me. In, in case of rapture, you can have my car. In case of rapture, you can have my car. Yeah, in case they get teleported up to God. In the rapture, wow. you can have their car. So looks up. It better happen soon. Yeah, don't got much time. <laughs> One way or another, I'm getting that yeah, car. That's my car. <laughs> it was promised to me. Let's follow them to their house. <laughs> I was just checking where my car's gonna be parked. <laughs> yeah, this is my car. It's their problem. Rapture. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was okay. But uh, he was also. I mean, this guy knows his stuff. In 1994, he was the first person to own the domain sex.com. Uh-huh. So some way or another, he was always, he had sex and meeting people and uh-huh. whatever on the on the brain. I don't know how much he sold it for, but... Uh, I'm sure uh, a pretty he got a, got a good deal out of that now. I mean, we Can saw that imagine? when we were looking for our domain. Though. Yeah. 
you know? Now ours was a pretty penny and it wasn't a good Yeah, they, they wanted like a grand for that. <coughs> but I mean, that was the thing to do, man. I wish I knew what was what back in 94 because people were just buying up any domain name they could. Yeah, and you're you know, buying, Sears.com, you're buying McDonald's. Air. McDonald's.com. That's it. And cheap. It was so cheap at the time. Mm -hmm. And they knew because they knew they had the foresight. Right. These companies are going to want to buy these. Yep. And they sold them for I mean, tens of thousands of dollars yeah. a pop. Those things are still trading, you know? though, even now. I mean, wow. Well, if anyone wants to buy twocommute.com, it's for sale. Ten thousand dollars. <laughs> it's yours. That's T W O. <laughs> Uh, the thing I came across is in South Korea, the, uh, they do their yearbooks a little different than we do. Okay. They can pretty much put any picture they want in there. Like out of school? Yeah. Like okay. your school yearbook. Uh -huh. And uh, so these people, like, they were showing, like, a whole bunch of their photos. And they have to be, like, of you. It can't be, like, you and me with a group of people, you know. Sure, yeah. But it's pictures of them, like... And not showing any nudity, they have shorts on, but like taking a shower and brushing their teeth at the same time, mm -hmm. and their hair's all soapy. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are dressing up like uh, like the Joker or Iron Man or Mario. Licking eyeballs. Licking eyeballs. You know, doing their best pose. Some are just like giving the finger. Uh -huh. Some of them, the guys dress like girls, and that's their yearbook photo. Uh -huh. Some of them dress like pirates. <laughs> But I guess it makes it more fun. I mean, yeah, that's kind of cool. I mean, but it's kind of hard to remember the person. I mean, right. If I'm in an Iron Man costume, like, what, what did he look like? I don't, Who was that again? <coughs> I don't remember. But I guess you know, those are the people that don't really care about that. Yeah, I guess know? they probably don't want to be remembered. So I'm going to cover up as much as I can. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, Korea, man. That's this cool thing. Like the the store right next to where I work is like a Korean grocery store mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things inside is uh, they sell things of kimchi which is like the national dish of Korea man that's like they can't get enough of it supposedly like the most heart healthy thing you can have but I've heard it tastes like vomit <laughs> but it's an acquired taste like once you yeah, get I over bet. that supposedly it's it's the greatest thing we, and you'll love do we try it one day I don't know I can I can get a bucket of it Let's uh, we'll try it. It's on the menu. All right. We'll do it. So that'll do it for the show of The Commute. Remember, you can check out our website, twocommute.com, T-W-O-commute.com. Uh, check out our Facebook page, The Commute. You can follow us on Twitter, at Driver Passenger. And what am I missing? I'm missing one. Uh, Twitter, Facebook. That's it? Uh, that's it. Okay. I'm not missing anything. See you next time. All right.